only time we forget sometimes is when our minds are those and come and we forget things. But a lot of time I was thinking how it is that Christianity can free us, but religion can imprison us. She said it ain't what goes in the mind, but what comes out of the mind. A lot of times we get hung up on the wrong thing. We need to make sure that we focus on the right thing. Because if we don't have that, then we miss not on everything that really matters. Everything else will fall into place. Our eyes getting dim, they'll fall into place. And one day we won't close and we won't open them. Our feet hurting, they'll fall into place. One day we're going to lay down and we'll get up. So all these things that, 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 that we are so familiar with, that our physical body is so familiar with, is going to be done away with one of these days. But that spirit got to go back to God and to be judged mm -hmm. and be held accountable for what we done on this side. Because there are two places that that we have a destination to go to. One is heaven and one is hell. And you might kind of compare if you want to look on a physical realm. Heaven would be like a vacation. And hell would be like going to work every day. <laughs> <laughs> so, we like to know that God's word, as Brother Lee said this morning, is our plumb line. And if we use God's word as our plumb line, we'll need what we need to be. Brother Danny, if you would, read some songs. I ask everybody to pray. Pray for us to be able to see what God has in store for us.
God in heaven, we do come again with thanksgiving in our hearts. We come again, Heavenly Father, just to say we agree. To acknowledge, Heavenly Father, before your presence, that we believe and we agree. Oh, Heavenly Father, as we lift up our voices to you in praise and in thanksgiving, we lift up our voices to you, Heavenly Father, in hope and in expectation. For we know, God, that you are God all along. You're sovereign, Heavenly Father, and you can do all by yourself. God just said to us, when we need you, to, we can call upon you. And Heavenly Father, we come calling upon you right now. You told us you would never leave us, or never would forsake us. And Heavenly Father, we have come to know for certain that even in the dark and troublous hours, that you are always there. Well, Father, and we thank you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the voices that has been lifted up in praise. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that the prayers has gone forward, Heavenly Father to come up against the darkness that come up against us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the healings that you have already done. We thank you, God, for being a God who restores your people. My body and soul. Oh, Heavenly Father, as we come today, Lord, we come to worship you. We come to praise you. And Heavenly Father, we come to listen the word, Heavenly Father, that you would have us to know with this hour. Oh, Heavenly Father, that we might address those things that are weak. That we might address those things, Heavenly Father, that is shortcoming, Lord God. That Not, Heavenly Father, that we might go down, God, but that we might come up. Lord God, that we might be made strong. Lord God, that we might be in compliance with everything, Lord, that you would desire for us to be. We ask you, Father, to forgive us for all of our sins. We ask you, Father, to cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. And Lord, as we have come forward today, as we lifted up our voices, Lord, as we have lifted up our hands, God, as we have clapped our hands, and we have expressed ourselves, Lord, in so many ways, God. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come in your name. God, we pray, Father, for our people. Yeah. Lord, we know that the prayer has not just begun. And the prayer is not in the tent. Yeah. But you said, Lord, we ought to always pray and we continue to pray. We continue to lift up our people. We continue to call upon you. Lord, we continue to rely upon your hope, yeah. your grace, your mercy, yeah. your salvation. Yeah. When we look at our lives, Heavenly Father, we know, Heavenly Father, you have already done a great work. And Lord, we know that you didn't bring us this far to leave us. You told us to come present our cases to you. Our cases has been presented and continued to be so. And Lord, now we just ask you to bless, bless the court of loving kindness. According to your tender love and according to your mercy. We claim victory in the name of Jesus. We count it as already done. In the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Praise God. God is worthy to be praised. We give honor to him who is our God, our our Heavenly Father, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, our comfort and guide, the Holy Spirit. We honor the pastors and the ministers 
the offices and all this, the ushers and the choir, and to each and every one that is under the sound of my weak voice, we give God praise and thanks, and we give honor to, to you in the name of the Lord. Thank God for this day. Thank God for the prayers. Thank God for the invitation. Thank God for the unity. Thank God for the coming together and the lifting of our voices in hope, but not only hope, but in expectation. I think you have to expect God. I think you have to believe God. I think you have to believe into the point that you know God, that God is faithful to his, his promise. We are just grateful. I'm not going to be very long here, but I would like to say just a few words to encourage us, to encourage us, and to help us to deal with, with life. Life is always coming at you one way or the other. There is always a fight to fight. And sometimes we deal with different people that create so many different situations with us. But I've come to the conclusion that if I went out in the woods and sit out, sit out on a stump by myself, I would still have something to fight with. If it ain't nothing but the mosquitoes, they would still have to fight with and they would aggravate me so much that I would be tempted to see. Amen. That's how the devil deals with you. So we all have to battle with whatever life brings at us. The scripture reading is coming from St. Matthew, St. Mark, the eighth chapter of St. St. Mark. 22, 23, 24, and uh, let me say 22 down to the 26 verses. And he came, and he came to Bethesda, and the break of blind man unto him saw him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and, and led him outside of town. And, and when he had spit on his eyes, he, he put his hands upon him and and he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he had put his hands again upon his eyes and, and made him look up. And he was restored, saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house, saying, we either go into the town or tell it to any in town. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his by the word. A quote, a portion of scripture from 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel 12 and 7 verse. It's not the whole scripture, but just part of the scripture. He said, and Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thou art the man. And before I, before I give you my subject and give you my thought, I want to share a story with you. I want to share a story with you. Um, because you know, one of the great battles that we all have is the battle with ourselves. I don't know about you, but I'm constantly in a fight with myself. Over this, it's over that. Um, because I, I, I got two sales. I got two people living in so far. And they always are at odds with one another. So therefore, we have to be willing to recognize that what our lives are, what our lives are made up of, and, and, and the confrontation that we have to deal with. But I'm going to tell you this story before I give you my subject. I, the story of something I read not too long ago. It was a church in so 
association that had joined in a church, another pastor, the congregation was waiting to the pastor to come. And they wanted to make a good impression on the pastor. And that particular day that they wanted to make such a good impression on the pastor, that was an old man showed up. He, he, was, he was ragging. He was Samaritan. He hadn't kept real good care of himself. But he came into church and he sat down in the back row and, and there was one man greeting him, but nobody else really had a whole lot to say to him. They just sort of looked at him and, and thought of all the time for him to show up. He showed up today when we would expect a, a new pastor. So the the tennis was standing, he was talking, he was talking about the new pastor. And then he said, I want to introduce to you the new pastor. Guess who he was? <laughs> and the old man came all the way from the back and he walked up to the pulpit. He stood behind the pulpit and he said, I'm going to give us an assignment. He said, tonight, I want you to go home and think about how you acted here today. <laughs> and I'll see you next Sunday. <laughs> that was the message. That was the message. Every now and then, we have to be made to see ourselves. <laughs> Even the best of us, and we try as hard as we can try, but we still fail. Mm -hmm. and Brother Lee said so many things this morning that confirmed what God was speaking to my heart about this morning. How it is that we have to confront ourselves and how we have to confront our sins. And my subject is a confrontation with the dark side. Confrontation with the dark side. I looked at the scriptures and I thought about David as I was thinking on this how that, that David was a good man. He was a man after God's own heart. The scripture said he was in the apple of God's eye. But David had a dark side. He had a dark side and he gave in to that dark side and and he covered it up. He covered. And he covered. And he covered. It's so important for us to deal with the dark sides of our lives because if we don't deal with the dark sides of our lives, that will become our personality. Amen. It is so important for us to open our ears up to hear what the Lord has to say to us and that we will, we will hear it and we will respond in the correct way because when the Lord is speaking, I mean, he may not speak the way you think he should speak. Amen. He may choose a way to speak to you, a way that you would never think he would come. He may choose a voice to, to speak through a voice that you thought you would never hear. No telling how God might speak to you. But when he speaks to you and when he chose you and when he calls upon you to challenge your dark side, you need to respond correctly. And the scripture says that as Nathan the prophet began to talk to David, he began to tell David about this man who had done this dirty, dirty, low-down thing. And, and David began to hear this message and David began to become furious. He began to become furious. He began to become so angry at this man who would do such a dirty thing. Would be so low down. Ain't it something how we can see it? When it's everybody else? Ain't it something how we got so much to say when it's somebody else's at the wheel? David began to say, that man shall surely be put to death. But what he didn't know, he was issuing judgment of death against his own self. And Nathan the prophet says to David, Brad, you are the man. And then he began to point out to David what his sins was. And David began to break. And he began to cry. He began to call out upon the name 
name of God. You see, before we can deal with the darkness of our lives, many times we have to be able to come to this point. God has to come us to a, bring us to a breaking point. God did not delight in us breaking, but God knows that so many times it takes us breaking in order for him to heal us. And when David broke, he began to pray. And we look at Psalm 51, and he prayed this beautiful prayer. He prayed this beautiful prayer for God to restore him. He prayed this beautiful prayer for God to heal, for God to help, and for God to forgive him. David had to confront the dark side of David. And I don't know about you, but I have to confront the dark side of me. Every one of us have a dark side. Every one of us have something that we would rather keep on the damn low. We would rather for it not to rise up against us. I'm not telling you to tell the world about it. I'm just telling you to deal with it. Yeah. 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 When we look at the scriptures and when we look at ourselves, it is so easy for us to say, I'm not that way. I'm not like that. I looked and I thought about how it is that we have spent so much time speaking on our young boys that pray rap music and how they have made up all of these rap songs that be great women folks. And it burns us up. It makes us mad. The fact that the whole culture is changed. The respect for women is changed. And the women's respect for themselves has changed. Because we have called them and changed, changed the name, and we have put it all on these young boys with their pants dragging down. But I found out here lately, young boys ain't the only one been doing it. I found out here lately, there are people doing it with good suits on. And that's the money can buy. I found out here lately, that they're coming from the north, south, east, and west. They're being exposed every evening on the 6 o'clock meeting. A man on the outside of town. And he spit on his eyes and he asked him, what do we see? He said, I see men walking around as trees. I'm afraid that we live in a world that sees men as trees. We live in a nation, we live in a nation that say we are a Christian nation. But I want to help we not allow Jesus to carry us out. And when he asked us what we see, we said we saw clarity and went away and did not allow him to touch us again. We live in a nation that needs to be touched again. Because we live in a world that sees men as trees and don't see every man an equal. We need to deal with the dark side of us. We need to look inside the church and recognize that there is a dark side. Because I'm sad, my heart breaks sometimes. My heart breaks when I can talk to preachers. And the conversation of God never comes up if I don't start it. My heart breaks when I come before congregations. And I see we're more adept and ready, more prepared for entertainment. That we are for the word of God. It is too serious to be playing. And I know sometimes everybody thinks I'm a hard preacher. Yes, that's what I am. I'm all right with that. That's who God made me to be. Oh, I would like to be a gentle preacher, but that ain't me. That ain't me. We have to confront our issues. We have to confront our darkness. Yes, if I'm a liar, I have to confront the lying spirit. If I am a hater, I have to confront the hating spirit. If I am an adulteress, I have to confront the adulterous spirit. If I'm just a telltale and a busy body, I have to confront that spirit because that's who I am. And I tell you what, if I allow it to continue to resist in me, one day I'll have to meet God and I'll have to meet God. With my sins upon me, and I'm not able to stand with my sins upon me. The Bible tells us that Jesus' disciples one day they went to buy bread, and Jesus said, "I, I need 
to go through Samaria. Because the relationship has been broken. That the Jews and the Samarians has no deal with one another. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. He said, I need to go. To, I need to go through Samaria. I need to go through Samaria because Samaria to need to know that they can't. Samaria to need, need to know that there is light for them too. Yeah. You see, the Jews have not yet dealt with their darkness. Because Christ come and Christ comes light. You see, you can't go through Samaria to, until you have come to the light. Amen. Because there is, has to be restoration. Restoration has, has to be made. And the scripture tells us that Jesus go and he talks to the woman. He talks to the woman at the well. And as he talked with her, she go around and she goes into town and she says, come see me. Tell me everything I've done. Is not this the Lord? And the scripture said the peoples came out. The peoples came out, and as the peoples came out, Jesus was able to, to minister to them. That was nobody else able to go back, go through to America, and restore that broken relationship. All right. And I'm saying, he ain't saying to us, I'm talking about dealing with our dark side. All I want to do is draw an outline. I want you to fill in the blanks. I want you to put in the colors. I want you to darken the lines where they need to be darkened and enlighten them where they need to be lightened because we all have a darkness to deal with. I can't tell you what your darkness is. You can't tell me what mine is. You can tell me I got one and I can tell you. You got one. I say that there are some of us right here in here today need to go through some areas. I don't know where your Samaritan is at. I don't know who or not the woman at the well, whether it's a woman or a man. Oh my God. But the restoration needs to be made. The church has to deal with its darkness. We have to come to the conclusion, I thank God for your Bible here. I thank God for you coming in here this morning. I thank God for your worship. I thank God for your praise. And I'm saying to you, as Reverend has said, as, as Brother Lee has said, we have to fight. Amen. We have made the church about something else. But the church is about fighting. It's about winning over darkness, over evil. Amen. But we are living in an environment now that is coming into fellowship. The churches are coming into fellowship with the world. Amen. We're becoming more as a social club. Amen. Amen. Oh my God. Amen. We are competing in everything. Preachers trying to preach one another. Choirs trying to sing one another. Deacon trying to pray one another. Mothers trying to look one another. We messed up. We messed up. What we gonna do when Jesus comes back? How we gonna handle if he come back and my darkness is still in my life? Not because it had to be. Because I would not confront it and I deny the darkness operated in my life. The darkness in your life take away your power. Amen. You ever been in a situation where you wounded to say nothing? Hey, say something, but you didn't have the power to say it. Amen. Because you had sin there. Amen. Oh, I'm not just talking about, I'm not pointing out no particular person. I'm talking about the body of Christ. Amen. I'm talking about where we are, where we are, church. And I'm telling you, this thing is coming to an end. Amen. We are closer right now than we have ever been any time in our life. We are looking around and we see people's when we look and have people, we see me in this tree. Let me talk to you for a minute. Let me talk to you about how it is that we are so bigoted. We are so prejudiced. Oh my God. We are. And we are quick to say, I ain't like that. Why? Because when we talk about it, all we can think about is the color of somebody's skin. What about class? How is it that we are brought up in an environment that seems to put people in classes? 
We are brought up to be president. It is ingrained in us, every one of us, because we got this fellow down here, this fellow right here, this fellow right here, and this fellow up here. And then we go about to act it out because we treat people in a, in a different manner. And when we're treating them that way, we see men as a tree. And if I see men as trees walking around, I need to be touched again. Amen. I don't need to leave the presence of the Lord so fast. I need to be touched again. I don't need to tell the Lord, Lord, yeah, I see. I need to be touched again. Why? Because my vision is distorted. I'm not seeing clear. I'm not seeing things as I need to see them. Let me ask you the question. Are you seeing things the way you need to see them? Are you seeing things the way God desires that you see them? When you look at yourself, when you look at your brother, when you look at your sister, do you see them the way you see your own self? When you look at the most pitiful, poorest people, person on the face of this earth, what do he look like to you? Do he look like he's the same as you are? Or do he look like he's a little worse? When you look at the richest, most powerful man in the world, what do they look like to you? These are questions that we have to ask ourselves. These are questions that have to be answered by the individual. Why? Because if we don't see right, we see men as trees. Walking around. And that is a darkness. Oh my God, listen to me, church. That is a darkness that just do not exist in the world. That is a darkness that exists in the church. I tell you what, you can go out somewhere, get you some big preacher, some big preacher, some with a big name, and everybody will crowd around you. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, we got to do some of these coming in you. I can stand up here and pour my heart out and get everything to see. Y'all know what you say. <laughs> but I'm just simply saying it, not to be mean. I'm just simply saying it to say that there is a dark side that we have to tend to. Amen. Reverend McClurk had brought us all to the altar. Amen. And I'm thankful for that. But don't go back to your seat with your darkness. <laughs> we have no we, we, we have no power. We have no power to confront issues. We have no power to confront many of the sins that come. Oh my God. We try to confront them, but we confront them the wrong way. We throw rail for rail. Insult for insult. It's darkness. Church, I ain't being mean. I'm just trying to get us to see ourselves. And I'm going to tell you what. I have come to the conclusion <laughs> that Job came to. Naked I came here. <laughs> oh my God. And naked I'm going to leave. Whatever the Lord gives me here, the Lord is going to take away. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. And as long as I get the opportunity to confront and to challenge us, mm -hmm. that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to challenge us when we are wrong. Because the thing about it, you know why? I think everybody's worth it. Amen. I think that Christ died on the cross meant something. And I think he died for every one of us, regardless of what our situation, what our circumstances might be. I think he died for every one of us. And regardless of how big or small we may see ourselves, I think he died for everybody. Amen. I think that is a message that needs to be told so much till we bleed it. Because sometimes, do you notice, you may not know it, but sometimes people feel so low down. That they feel like they're too long to be saved. Amen. I remember that. Amen. I know that. I know that because I've lived that life. Amen. I've lived a life for thinking I'm too long to be saved. When I began to talk to God and I remember reading the scripture where it talks about a partial reward. Can't find it nowhere to save my soul now. That's what it said to me then. 
And the Lord spoke to me and said, no, son, go for the whole reward. Oh, my God. Go for the whole thing. I'm telling you, Chuck, I'm going for the gusto. I'm going for the gusto. I'm going for everything that the Lord wants me to go for. I'm standing for everything he wants me to be. I'm not going to bow down. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up who he called me to be. Jesus had to go to Samaria because somebody needed to know they was right down there. He there with a woman and he called her a dog. She accepted position as a dog, but yet he knew that dogs need light to. Oh my God. He there with a leopard man and the man said, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. He said, I will. The child shall be clean. The leopard man needed to know that there was hope. The woman of Samaria needed to know that there was hope. The woman with color dog needed to know that there was hope. The people of this world needed to know that there was hope. You need to tell somebody. Lord to come. 
come in. He will come in. He'll change your heart. He'll give you a new spirit in your heart. All the old fellow try to hang around, try to root it out. But if you will let the Holy Spirit lead you, you won't go wrong. Come on, cry with us.
then it works for us. Then it works for us. Father, we pray your blessings upon everyone that is around the sound of our weak voice. According to the need, Father, that you see everyone standing in the I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would strengthen them. When that endurance power, Heavenly Father, is needed, God, give them the power to stand. To be able to endure, Heavenly Father, and hold on to your unchanging hand. I pray, Heavenly Father, that, that we all take a look. And when we look at ourselves, Heavenly Father, and the thing, God, that we see that is not in compliance, that we would say, Lord, take this. Lord, help me to overcome this. Lord, strengthen me and deliver me from this. We claim victory. In the name of Jesus. The counting is all ready now. Now may the grace of our Lord, our Savior Jesus Christ, dead, buried, and a risen Savior. May the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, and make it abide in each of us until we shall meet again. Let us all say, Amen.